Good morning. It is Thursday, 7.52. We're going to be taking this water heater out and putting in a tankless unit. Um, Peter will be with me today to help me get the job done. We'll also be doing a whole home smart shutoff valve on the water main right down there. So, should be straightforward enough um, and hopefully I get some good footage. Okay, so disconnected gas. We'll be redoing gas for the tankless unit as well as our domestic waters. But uh, look how nasty those connections were. Um, we're gonna clean out his boiler while we're here because it is incredibly, incredibly dirty. Get all this dust cleaned out of here. Shut the gas off. And we'll pull all our burners out and clean it out while we wait for the tank to drain. So Peter's cleaning the boiler. Here we have our whole home shut off. Uh, mowing flow. It doesn't want to come out of the box. Yes, yeah, so. Here's our low and flow. This is gonna be kind of tied up against that wall. And it has an app you download on your phone and install O-ring. These uh, connections here. Got this contraption here. And this is a bypass, so if you're ever working on the house or whatever, you could put this in its place. And let's see, this should plug into the wall. Yeah, there's a power plug in there. I've never done this one by mowing. I've only done, uh, I forget what the other one I've done is, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's straightforward enough. Just put it in just like that. Obviously with whatever direction flowing the way it should. So yeah, that, that direction. And basically it'll learn his house flow, shut off water if it senses a leak, and he can always shut it off from his phone or turn it on from his phone, which is pretty cool. They give you an extra set of O-rings, which is nice. And uh, it's really it. It's pretty simple to put together and get installed. And here's our Bosch unit, which interestingly, these are not the hookups. Those are tankless flush valves so that you could do the annual maintenance and clean out on it. Our water connections are up top. So that way it's an easy swap out for a tanked uh, water heater. So we got our hot water, our cold water and our relief valve tapping. However, our gas does come in on the bottom. It would be cool if the gas came in on the top as well, but got a power cord. An electrician will be bringing us power later on today. We may temporarily just be using an extension cord to get it all running. And then of course we have condensate, which we'll have to figure out where to discharge that. Uh, did bring a condensate pump for it, neutralizing pump. And the old tank is out and pretty dusty. But, oh, I can't lift the gate, well, <laughs> my arm's tired. Okay, so while Peter picks up two by four and more ram set nails because I ran out and nobody told me, I am, um, I marked where I'm gonna need to cut in and I cleaned off our pipe for our press connections for our, our mow and flow. I'm gonna put it right there, um, which monitors everything except for the irrigation system. Um, I might have to shut off this valve and disconnect that union 
to get enough play in the pipe to work with it, but we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna get a bucket, that way I could drain water as it comes out. Yeah, so I did have to disconnect that union and uh, draining down the rest of the water that was in the house now. Just gotta make sure not to lose that O-ring. That should be nice and smooth. Just cut it, pop the new one in and press it. And Peter's making a special appearance. We are getting the first board up there and ramp set it in for the boiler. And it's split, but it'll be fine. And one more board so that we can mount our piece of plywood up. Okay, so here is our unit in place. Uh, we should be able to drill out holes no problem, chimneys out of the way for our exhaust and fresh air. And I'm working on gas. We are gonna do some mega press with this one inch. Um, I could thread actually if I really wanted to. So maybe we will, but I'm gonna work on gas from here to there uh, and then bring it up. Okay, so I am still working on that gas. Peter is working on the domestic water. It looks good. Um, I am going to press there as well as press here to reconnect, but I got a mount in there to hold it nice and secure. We have our drip leg, our union, 290s, shut off valve, and we should be good to go and then just drill the holes to outside which will be uh, fun. And we're drilling our hole now. Inside, this one's an exhaust. It overheated. The battery didn't even die. I didn't even feel hot. Does this mean the battery's broke? Oh, this just means the battery overheated. Get a new one. These Milwaukee batteries are annoying. I keep like six charged batteries in the truck and you always blow through them in a job like this. It'd be nice if they lasted a little bit longer. We got a new one that has three bars. Peter's got one that has four. Uh, we'll see what happens. And what we're also doing here is cleaning out a ductless unit. Look at those filters. That is crazy. See the blower wheel in there, nice and dirty. So we'll get that all cleaned up. And we took out the screws from the unit. Now we can pull our cover off and we can hook up our big bib kit and get everything in here nice and clean. Sometimes I like to take the damper out. Is it going to be a pain on this one? Um, what does this look like right here? Tall camera, please. It's sketchy. It's one. And you just have to make sure that the, spring, <laughs> that the spring goes back the way that it was. Which is, let's see, zoom in on here so I can see it. It holds it closed. So that means. It'll go in and then this will. You can't block my little bit. You gotta see it. This, this will go. Oh, come on. There's a pain. I think it's. Yeah. It'll go. I can't do this with gloves. It'll go right in there. <laughs> you don't have to explain it as long as it actually works. 
Yeah, but people might want to see. So it goes right in there like that, and then it forces it closed. The motor has to actually open it. Remember, yeah, so. I'll just make sure that we don't lose that spring. Got our big pit, call the speed clean. Somebody tied it into a knot, and that's probably me. I think I'm the one who ever really uses this. I think the last person used it was me. Oh, so Peter tied it into a knot. I didn't put it back there. Hold this with that, with that hand. Um, and we did the basement of that. Of the closed close place? Yes. right here like that and it catches any water funnels it right into this bucket and Peter will use the brush washer and clean it can I have it back and here is this not particularly. I still have to finish the tankless. Uh -oh. Are you using <sighs> yes. It'd be nice if they cleared a path for us, but well, I guess they did clear a path for us, but not very much. This whole room looks like it's gonna be done. <sighs> okay. And yeah, we'll hit it with coil cleaner and then just rinse it off with the jet. Okay, so we just got everything saturated with foaming coil cleaner, let it sit for a little bit, and then uh, rinse it out. And there it goes, rinsing it off. Try to keep the ceiling as dry as possible. And it runs right down the bucket. And we got some really black water coming out into our blower, or out of our blower. All this right here. That's what's in the air that you're breathing. Spinning that wheel and then just getting a full 360 clean on it. It's it's pure black. It's not even just like a little gray, it's black. That's all mold and mildew. And I need to finish up here with our duckless, or our duckless, uh, tankless unit. Uh, I'm gonna drill a condensate pump right here. Um, obviously for our condensate, where we're gonna discharge it, uh, for, as a temporary measure, we're going to pop a hole in our fresh air and run it out of that fresh air tubing. And then when, uh, we can, we're gonna go through the ceiling uh, and over to these lines right here into the sump pump, but for now we're just uh, terminating it outside because that's the easiest way to do it. Shout out to Dove, I hope you're watching this. The, uh, the short amount of time Dove was working here, he broke my spray nine bottle that I've had like the entire time I've worked here. So, that's a lot of spray nine. Spray, spray squirt seven. nine. Spray seven. Okay, and now we're running it to make some hot water. Make sure the temperature's okay. Make sure everything functions properly. I'll have all be clean up and fill out the invoice. And that's it. Unit is up and running. It would've been nice if the light was on. And it came out nice, nice and simple. Gas came out good. 
Mega Press. And our mowing flow. Just right there, it's powered up, it's running. No water leaks. And all of our equipment's there. And then the extra components are zip tied nearby. Okay, so we finished up with that. I am headed now to uh, a combi NTI boiler has an issue in Huntington. In one mile, turn um, left onto Mill Road. It's about an hour and 20 minutes away, but it's close to my house. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so here's our unit, and he was right. It looks exactly like a Wild McLean Ecotech. I mean, it's almost an exact replica. Just the placement of the uh, control board is a little bit different, and the uh, display's different, but we got the same Taco 00 E circulator in there, uh, fire tube heat exchanger, gas valve, a little bit of a different location, blower, you know, right on top of the heat exchanger, it's like the lock and vars as well. And we got a nice um, flexible primary manifold. Our domestic line has flush valves. Got a big water filter here, as well as our two zones. Are these pulling away? Looks like they're pushing back. No, it's pulling away. Interesting. So I guess Pulling supply, pushing return back into here. But we are on the return side of the unit. That's very interesting. This is the return manifold. This is the supply of our manifold. So our boiler is circulating water this way. Down and up. Down and up. But then we're pulling... Oh no, it's just double looped, okay. So it is pulling the supply from this larger line, which comes up over behind and in, and that's where we're going up. It's an interesting setup. I would think um, we'd want more separation there, but right now everything's warm. Pumps are not running. They're also set for Bluetooth. Never seen these 0018s. So temperature and our pressure. Interesting that we're reading less pressure on this one than that one, but let me get some space heating zones turned on. A little bit tough to see the screen with the light on. Let's see. Set for auto, 179. Uh, escape, escape. I don't want to mess with any of the settings yet. Okay, so we set for auto, which I would take means we have an outdoor reset. <laughs> Get it fired up and see what happens. Main complaint here is domestic being cold. It doesn't keep up in the cold days regardless for heating, but the main issue here is that our domestic water temperature drops out after some time. So I'm just monitoring it to see what happens. He has it set for 130, which is what it's doing currently. Um, and he says it dies down in temperature. We are very hot. It'd be nice if we had some sort of external temperature gauge, but so far we are okay. I guess I should figure out what the flow rate on this unit is. No, let's see, menu. Comfort heating and domestic hot water. We've got combi, tank sensor, and aquastat. I would 
Hope we're set for combi. Detect menu, hold OK, and escape until 252 appears. Menu button to advance to the next menu option. Navigate menu option using plus and minus. Let's escape. Let's do that. Until 222. Okay, now set passcode to 234 using plus button. Oh wow, you have to go up by every. Is that doesn't take that much time, but you'd think they'd do one number at a time. Press OK to enter. Menu. Okay. Now, menu options. Okay. Error. PCB. Domestic water. 2.0. Oh. Uh, wait, wait, wait. 2.28 is domestic hot water mode. Zero is combi, okay. <coughs> Still feels hot. Watch it for a little. Well, oh, that stinks. Looks like our issue here is with our uh, mixing valve. I got a temperature on our hot water and a temperature on our mixed water. We got a 34 degree temperature difference. And I have this maxed out at the hottest temperature, which would be 176 degrees. And this is 130 degree water coming in. We should get 130 degree water coming out. So I'm going to see, I don't think I have this. I wonder if, uh, um, if a Kalefi will fit right in its place, but I don't think so. And just like that, I thought I was going to need NTI tech support for this one, but nope. It was a simple, uh, mixing valve swap. So I'll show you the, uh, the valve. We're going to do a combustion test to make sure it's burning safely and uh, test our heating, but yeah. Okay, so our Kalefi fit in there perfectly. Direct fit. Um, the only thing was I couldn't use the temperature gauge, which is kind of a bummer, but is what it is. Um, and uh, what was the other thing? He wanted it maxed out. He's happy with the temperature of it at max. The boiler is only producing 130 too, so. But, yeah, warning, thermostatic mixing valve was required, so. Yeah, I'm gonna get this cleaned up, do a combustion test, wrap the unit up, but it was a nice, simple one. And he just had that replaced by a company not long ago. It's interesting that it failed so soon. Check valves move freely. So, I don't know. It's garbage takeout. That's why it failed. Okay, so the customer also has this really, like, sophisticated vent damper here. So, he needs it put on this one. I'm gonna see if I could get it in there. Uh, should be no problem. Okay, so that was pretty, uh, pretty nice. It wasn't a boiler issue. It was just that mixing valve. Um, uh, while I was down there, I noticed all these trophies everywhere. Uh, and... Unfortunately, the customer is in a quarter mile in a turn left onto West Shaw Road. But I asked him what the trophies were all about, and he is a he used to be a motocross like dirt bike racer, which is super cool. Um, and an accident is what put him in the wheelchair. But he said that he didn't that he loved it. He doesn't regret anything. So that's good. He had a lot of fun when he did it. That'd be something super cool to do. A motocross race. Also terrifying to be going that fast and with so many people like right next to you or behind you or in front of you, Turn like left onto West one bad thing happens and that's it. I think he said he broke 
two of his vertebrae, which is, uh, it's not fun. But, uh, I am headed now back to my house. And I am In three quarters of a mile. Turn left by the South ocean, Road. and it's kind of gross looking. The water's low. Oh, actually, I know exactly where I am. There's a beach right by my house, but... Yeah, hopefully you enjoy watching the video. Um, comment any advice or criticisms or feedback. And subscribe. Thanks for watching.